today's class is no different. I'm going to put this under the um, the category of, or the playlist of destroying Christian dogma, and we're going to how to be saved, how to be saved. It, came, it dropped in my spirit last week. You know, learning the, the Hebrew is nice, and learning the culture is nice, but one thing we have to make sure that we can express to others how to be saved. But growing up in the church in the 80s, that was the thing. Are you saved? Are you saved? It was like a badge of honor to be saved. And Christianity gave us a version of salvation that the scriptures do not support. So today is one of those classes, if you grab a hold to this thing, spiritual text is going to come. But we don't have to fear the spiritual text because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. So as these, spirit, as these spiritual attacks come, you know why they're coming. They want that meat that you just got. And all you got to do is press into Abba more. Because that's if you know the enemy's goal, you go the opposite. It's like in sports. You're trying to stop me from scoring, so I got to get to that goal any, by any means necessary. It's the same thing with spiritual matters. As you understand the Most High is giving you revelation, the enemy ain't going to sit back like, oh, I done lost another one. Nah, he's going to try, come try to take what you got. And it's not because you did something wrong. It's because he hates, he hates the most high. We did, we're did. we innocent bystanders. I used to say we were born, our parents didn't know, but they dropped us into a middle of a war zone. And it has nothing to do with us. It's the Messiah. Messiah chose us to be his people and Satan's jealous. Everything's, everything the most high took from Satan, he gave it to us. So we dropped our children into a war zone and now the most high is open our eyes to see, and now we know we got a fight on our hands. So I got a handout. I don't think it's going to be too long. But the spirit does what it does. It's not my assembly. I'm just a, a facilitator here. I'm just a facilitator here. This is not my assembly. So today's topic, a topical study, is how to be saved. How to be saved. Because everyone wants to be saved. Um, Jew, Gentile alike, we want to be saved. And as she's passing out the handouts, Christianity teaches that the Bible is about the salvation of the world and or the redemption of mankind. So if you grew up in a church, or if you ever heard a preacher say, God has a redemptive plan for mankind, if you ever heard that phrase in any kind of verbiage, they, they word it different ways. You just heard cemetery, I mean seminary doctrine. That's seminary doctrine. God has a redemptive plan to restore mankind. Adam fell, and so man fell, and now this, this Bible is about the restoration of mankind. But all praise due to Abba Yah. Today, if Abba be with us, we're going to just go, and this thing is like one of those cars. You know when one of your neighbors get a car? You start to see that car everywhere. That's how today's class is. Once you sh show you a few scriptures, you're going to see them everywhere. This Bible is not about the redemption of mankind. This Bible is not about the redemption of mankind. This Bible doesn't, doesn't support any of the Christian dogmas. So as soon as you hear a preacher say, God has a plan for man, God has a redemptive plan for man, you know you're about to hear philosophy. This book called the Bible does not support a redemptive plan for mankind. Um, the Gaddafi, and just to get us focused, Elder, can you take us to Jeremiah 30? Jeremiah 30. It reads differently, differently in, the, in the Septuagint, and the Septuagint doesn't have this verse, but we're going to offer it up because it's going to make it does make sense, and it, it is recorded other places. Jeremiah 30. In verse 10. The Cathar reading is coming from Jeremiah 30 and verse 10. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 10, KJV. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith Yahweh. Neither be dismayed, O Yashra. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and your seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. None shall what? None shall make him afraid. This verse here is so powerful because it's prophecy. He says, fear not my servant. And then who's the servant? Jacob's the servant. Not the church. Not the Baptist. 
The, the text we're reading from says, my servant is Jacob, a.k.a. the 12 tribes. And then he says, I'm going to bring your seed from afar. It didn't say your spiritual seed. Has spiritual seeds been scattered afar? No, this is a physical people being restored to their land. And then he says, when I put you back in your land, none's going to make you afraid again. To this day, these people are scared. Those people in that area are in fear as we speak. They're eight hours ahead of us, so it's already dark. And they got bombs dropped in. Children are crying all they're, they're fearful over there. So if you're the people, why are you scared? The Most High says, when I put my people back, they won't be afraid anymore. So salvation is for people who've been scattered abroad. Salvation is for people who has been scattered abroad. So Jeremiah 30 and 10 will be our scriptural focus. Today's topic is how to be saved. Because I know I, I went through my stages where I didn't want to say anything. I don't, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to try to convince people. I just want to, Father, when I'm done being a sinner, I just want to make it in. And then the Most High heard me, even as a sinner, he heard me. And now, okay, son, I'm going to open your eyes, but now you got to go back and get the others. In the military, they got a thing, a, a phrase, no man left behind. So as you guys are coming in, it's beautiful that you're understanding, but now you got family and friends who don't understand. And you have to be able to, with some class, have conversations with these people. Not arguing matches, your pastor is stupid, your pastor is heathen, no. You draw more flies with honey, right? right. So you, you have to be able to, with some class and dignity, sit down and talk to people. You want, to be, you want salvation, according to the book, this is how you receive salvation. So let's get into this class. This is how to be saved. This is destroying Christian dogma on how to be saved. The Bible does not support salvation for the mankind or salvation for the world. This is destroying Christian dogma, how to be saved. And the first reference is Numbers 24. Numbers 24, verses 17 through 24. By Madabar is what our elders will say. By Madabar is in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Uh, we're going to help carry the load today, so we ain't going to burn you down too much. Numbers 24, verses 17 through 24. Shema, when you have it. Shema. Read. Numbers 24, starting verse 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corner of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheph. And Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites, and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy your thou puttest your net, your nest in a rock. Excuse me. Nevertheless, the Kenites shall be wasted, until Ashur shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when the most high doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Kittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. He also shall perish forever. This prophecy is prophesying about the termination of nations. This prophet, these seven verses just gave you the future of these nations. The star is going to rise out of the Hebrews. The star is going to rise out of the Israelite people. And when this star, when this power arise, the nation of Israel will do valiantly. And then it tells you we're going to destroy these nations. So how can you preach a dogma that this Bible is about the redemptive plan for man if these nations are being destroyed? It's using words like perish forever. 
But in our layman's terms, you're going to be killed. So right in the very five books of Moses called the Torah, this contradicts Christian dogma that this Bible is about salvation for man. Salvation is not for man. Salvation is for specific people. These nations' fate is sealed right here. It runs down. Edom is going to be servants. Edom and Seir are the same people. The Edomites, verse 18, Numbers 24 and 18. The Edomites will be servants. And then it drops down Amalek. Amalek is a descendant of Esau. So Amalek's sons, they only get to be servants. That's how you have to break this thing down. Edomites have many sons. So some Edomites are going to be saved to be our servants. But the line of, the, the line of Amalek, his sons, his line are destroyed forever. So you can't sit up in church and say this Bible is about God's plan to save mankind. And right in the fourth book of Moses, we have nations being destroyed forever. This Bible is not about the redemptive plan of mankind. Salvation is not for everybody. Any comments or questions about that? The other thing I wanted to point out, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I don't know how many times you read these verses, the Most High still show you something. If you go back to Numbers 24 and 17, Numbers 24 and 17, it ends says, A star shall rise out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. These are the Hebrew Israelites. And this scepter is going to smite the corners of Moab. Moabs, they're Hebrews too. The Moabites are Hebrews too. So it's not about being a Hebrew. The Moabites come from Lot and Lot's daughter. They're Hebrews because Lot was, y'all know Abraham's nephew. So the Moabites are Hebrews, but they're getting destroyed too. And then it continues, it says, they would, they would smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. These Israelites are going to smite the corners of Moab and then destroy all the children of Seth. Seth is the son that replaced Abel. Cain slew Abel. So Cain's punishment was, you're going to live to be old, but I'm going to have someone destroy you, Cain. And then Seth was appointed. That's what Seth means. He was appointed for Eve to replace her dead son. So when it says that the, the power is going to rise out of Jacob and destroy all the sons of Seth, Seth is representing the rest of Adam's sons, the rest of the world. The Hebrew Israelites are being restored to power, and they're going to destroy all the sons of Seth. This is a cultural text. It didn't say the sons of Adam because Adam is gone, but Seth is representing Adam now. Like, if Elder falls asleep, we wouldn't refer to Elder anymore. We would refer to Yadon because he's the next of his father. So the text is saying he's going to destroy the sons of Seth, Seth but it's really the sons of Adam. This power is rising. The Israelites are being restored, and we're going to destroy the world. So again, ask these pastors, ask your family, how is this Bible about the restoration of mankind if it says this power from, from the Israelites destroyed the sons of Seth? These are the eyes the Most High has given us. This book is not about the salvation of the world. Any comments or questions about that? The second witness, you know, we live by two or three witnesses. The second witness to this is Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, and we're going to read the first 12 verses. Just to give you a second witness that I'm not just making this up, I'm not twisting this thing. The Israelites destroy the world. Joel chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Shema, do you have it? Wow. Read Joel chapter 3, starting at verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, 
I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Gather who? I will gather all nations. All nations. And will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So Jehoshaphat is a pagan word. In the Hebrew, we would say Yashapat. Shapat is a word that means judge. So if you look up the book of Judges, in Hebrew, that word is Shapat. So Jehoshaphat is a pagan word. They're trying to express Hebrew. It's the valley of Yah Shapat. Yah judges. And when Yah judges, what music does he use for judgment? Death. Death. Judgment is, that's why it says, just let this flow. When Christians say, you can't judge me because the Bible says judge not, it wasn't talking about correcting you for fornicating. It was saying, don't try to put death on your brother when you all have sinned. So it wasn't saying, I, you mean to tell me, my wife can't tell me, hey, you've been drinking for two weeks straight. You ain't went to work. Don't judge me. No. Don't put death on the ultimate judgment is capital punishment, death. So the valley of Jehoshaphat, no, it's the valley of Yah Shapat. Yah is going to judge, and the most ultimate judgment is death. So the nations are being brought to this valley of Yah's judgment. He's going to kill the nations in this valley. Did y'all catch that? Read on, Mom. Uh, uh, let's see, verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Verse 4. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coasts of Palestine? Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me, Swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. So he's, this is the most high asking the nations around about us who have taken advantage of our downfall. Are you going to repay me for what you did to my chosen? If you try to repay me, I double what I'm going to do to you. Mm. So he's talking to the nations that are around about us that was celebrating that they're over us now. Celebrating that you're telling the Jamaican, yeah, make me a plate. Mm. The most high is asking these people, the Sidonians, you Tyrians, are you going to repay me for what you did to my people? If you try to attempt to repay me, I will double what you got coming. This Bible is not about the redemption plan of, of, of for mankind. It's for the holy people. Read on out. Verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabines, to a people far off, for Yahweh has spoken it. Proclaim you this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come, all of you heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Then the cause your mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. The Most High is telling the nations, the, the Gentiles, the pagans, Gather up all your your, your, your your thugs, all your really soldiers, all, all your, your, your mighty men, you think about that? Russia, y'all y'all think Russia's a world power? China, you think China's a world power? All your bad boys, gather them all together. Y'all all band together and meet me in this valley. And I'm going to repay, I'm going to recompense what y'all did to my people. This is about the salvation of a specific people. This Bible is not about the salvation of mankind. If you go back to Job 3 and verse 7, Job 3 and 7 says, Behold, I will raise them up out of the place where you have sold them. Raise them up is another synonym for salvation. I'm going to raise them up where you sold them. Has the Christians been sold around the world? Has the Baptist been sold around the world? 
This book is not about the redemptive plan of mankind. This book is about the redemptive plan of the Hebrew Israelites. That's what the theme of this book is. From cover to cover, the Most High is restoring his people. Any comments or questions about that one? Let's get uh, plain black and white. This is what they call the plain reading of the text. We're not adding to it. We're not you know, pushing your head back, getting you excited. We're reading the text, and the text is agreeing with, or we're agreeing with the text. We're not twisting our commentary. To, we're not twisting the text to fit my commentary. We twist our commentary to fit this text. That's, if you didn't catch that, we don't twist our, this text to fit our commentary. You have to twist your commentary to fit this text. The next witness, we're going to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. How to be saved. How to be saved. Shemar, you have it? Starting at verse 3, read. Leviticus 26, starting at verse 3. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. If you do what? If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. Are we reading the same text? The same text. So this is, this in their language, if is a what? If is a clause. What's this thing? I just want a man to love me unconditionally. I want a woman to love me unconditionally. That's foolishness. Ain't nobody going to love you unconditionally. You keep, you keep staying out all night not bringing that bread home. See how long that girl stay there. You keep running around and getting three or three babies by the neighbors. See how long this man stay there. Loving you unconditionally is nonsense. Your father don't love you unconditionally. It says, if you keep my commandments. That's a clause. If you keep my commandments, I love you. So what's the opposite of that? If you don't keep my commandments, I don't love you. This is the Most High God. This is the Most High God, and we're made in his image. So how can we love unconditionally if he don't love unconditionally? Does that make sense? Makes sense. So when you, when they say, um, what's the old song? The thrill is gone, <laughs> gone away. We, we, we're made in the image of our Father. You could do something to turn, well, you said for better or for worse, slow down. This is common kind of sense. I said for better or for worse, Meaning that you're going to work, go to job, and you, it's, it's conditions. It's conditions. Read on out. Uh, verse 4. Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and you shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. He just mentioned wine and bread. The vintage is talking about your, your vineyards. If you keep my commandments, I'm going to provide for you. It didn't say if you go to the, the, the Greco-Roman uh, uh, universities. It says if you keep my commandments, I'm going to make sure your wine is flowing, your bread is flowing. While we over here working? Disobedience. We working like a dog 40 hours a week. And I can't even talk about us working like a dog. I'm thinking of our, our so-called Jamaican brethren. Working in hot temperatures. It's humid at 8.30. I'm sweating like a bull at 8.30. Like, man, I just, just took a shower. So we're over here hustling and bustling because we didn't keep the commandments. If you keep my statues, I will make sure your vineyards are overflowing. I will make sure your bread is overflowing. None of this go to school or now, yeah, you got a bachelor's, but now, yeah, this job calls for a master's degree. Oh, yeah, you got your master's degree, but this job calls for a people. You just keep moving the goalposts. Keep moving the goalposts. I know you got a degree, but now your credit score ain't right, so no, we really can't give this loan. Keep putting these hurdles, if, and we just can't see it. Keep the commandments. We can't see this thing. We don't have. Verse 6. And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. Seven, and you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Mm -hmm. And five of you shall chase a hundred. Five of the righteous shall chase a hundred wicked. Uh huh. And a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. Uh huh. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, 
and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. I will have respect unto you. I will have respect unto you. I will favor you over the other ones because I have given you a covenant and you're keeping my covenant, so I favor you. This book ain't about everybody. He's favoring these people that he made a covenant with, and he's telling these people, if you keep my covenant, I'm going to help you destroy your enemies. Father, you should chase a thousand. This is about a specific people. This Christian dog, but this Bible is about God's redemptive plan for man. Is Christian dog, but the text don't agree. Where are we at, Ab? Uh, verse 21. Uh, verse 21 of, Levit of Leviticus 26. And if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. This is another witness that the Most High's love is not unconditional. I don't care how many times these pastors said, well, Jesus just paid for it all, and Jesus loves me regardless. The text doesn't agree with you. According to this text, it's always a clause. If you keep my commandments, then I will open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. It's always a clause. This unconditional love and this salvation for mankind, the text doesn't support that. Any comments or questions about that? Salvation is for specific people. Salvation is for a specific people. Today's topic is how to be saved. How to be saved. Let's get another witness over in Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. And we're going to read the first seven verses. Isaiah 5, 1 through 7. Read. Isaiah 5, starting the first verse. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choice, choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. So this is a parable about the vineyard. And the Most High says he, he planted a vineyard and the, he's cleaned the vineyard up, picked all the, the stones out of it, he, all the weeds. He said, I got this vineyard and made it. Like, Y'all ever seen those pretty terraces in the city? Or you ride past a neighbor, they got that. That's the Most High said, I, I, I got all the glass, all the broken bottles out of this thing. I got this vineyard looking nice and pretty, and, and I expected it to bring forth grapes, but my vineyard started bringing forth wild grapes, sour grapes. You ever been to a grape and it's just had to give you locked jaw? Jacked up. I said, grapes are supposed to be sweet. This vineyard, this parable is about a certain people. Read on. Verse 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, forth wild grapes mm -hmm. and now go to I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten up and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down so I, I don't know what else to do how many of y'all naughty head rough button uh, hard head came on I don't know what else to do for you the most high is telling this vineyard I don't know what's more I, I done cleaned you up I put a fence around you to keep the animals out I, I had a little little uh, pavilion over you what more can I do to you? I have to take my hand away. I'm going to take my hedge off you. How you, you think you grown? How your parents say you think you grown? Go on out there and see what happens to you. The Most High says, I got to take my hand off my vineyard. And let's see what happens to you. Read on. Verse 6. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged. But there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. So I'm going to take away my provision for you. 
I'm all you need. But since you don't want to listen to me, I'm going to take away my provision. Now, I, let's see who is this vineyard really talking about. Verse 7. Verse 7. For the vineyard of Yahweh of hosts is the house of Yasharal. The house of who? The house of Yasharal. The house of Yasharal. Uh huh. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plain. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, they cry. So this parable about, about the vineyard is all about the Israelites. It's about the Hebrew Israelites. And you can't snatch a page out of our family photo album and put it on the world. This is specifically talking about the Hebrew Israelites. We are the vineyard of the Most High. We are his pleasant plan. And what I love about the Most High, when he opens your eyes up, remember my goal, one of my passions before he put me to sleep, I want to restore critical thinking back to us. I want to stop all this emotionalism, all this shaking and all. Oh, all this organ got you. Stop all this emotionalism and let's just clearly think. You want me to believe that this Bible is about everybody, Pastor, but this text in Isaiah 5 says that Israel is my beloved. Israel. Pastor, can you show me another text where the Most High says another nation is his plan? Or did he retract this and says the whole world is my plan? This is the critical thinking. Turn the music off. We're tired of being entertained. If you want to be entertained, go to the movies. Go to the circle. We want to learn how to be holy. We want to learn how to be saved. And all your little uh, churchy sayings ain't getting nobody nowhere. We want to restore critical thinking. If we're all the same, and this Bible's about everybody, show me a passion, pastor or two, where the Most High says, the whole world is my plan. The whole world is my vineyard. You can't show me that text. Israel is his vineyard. Israel is his plan. Any comments or questions about that? And what you're saying, um, you know, is the reason, you know, everything has been set up like this for a reason. You know, if you go to school, you go to quote unquote church, you go anywhere, you know, where someone kind of speaks over you and you just supposed to just retain everything that they say Come. and regurgitate it on a test or whatever the case may be. It's been set up like that for a reason, but thanks be to the most high. He's, you know, by his spirit, he's brought back the ability to critically think. Come on now. Because a lot of times, you know, because now when we're, when, you know, because of because of the spirit, we can now look at, you know, the text or we can look at certain things critically thinking. If you just sit down and just think, come just on now, think about it and, you know, and, and make it make sense. You know what I mean? But again, it, the this, this system's been set up to just have some person speak over you, and you're just supposed to believe everything that they say. Who taught you how to have church? <laughs> Who gave you the order of, of service? Which, where did you get that order of service from? Because I can't find how y'all hold y'all services. I can't find it in the scriptures. Everything you've been practicing and learning is becoming from foreigners. This Bible is set up for specific people. And I'm going to let this flow and get ahead of myself. So we just came from the so-called Old Testament. And the so-called Old Testament is using language like raise them up. And I'm going to take my heads away. And the Old Testament, quasi kept, isn't really the Old Testament. But that's what the Christian know it as. So we try to use terms they're familiar with. So we just read language in the so-called Old Testament about Israel being his special people, about if they keep his commandments, he's, he's going to provide for them, he's going to bless them tremendously, which pretty much equates to being saved. If you keep my commandments, you shall be saved, because if he says, I'm going to take my rain away, if he takes his rain away, you have no food. If you have no food, you die. So it, it, you can't get away from keeping the law no matter how you try. If you keep his law, you're saved. If you break his law, you're dead. That's what the text said. But let's go over to the New Testament so the Christians don't think we don't read from the New Testament. Well, I do accept this text. I do accept this text. The Most High has given us eyes to dissect this text. So let's go over to Luke 1, Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 67. Luke chapter 1, starting at 67. 
What you're about to read, the same language about a special people being the plant, a special people being restored, we're reading the same language in the so-called New Testament. So the question on the table is, Pastor, how salvation for everyone if the text is, isn't saying it? The text is not saying salvation is for everyone. Luke 1 and 67. Shema? Shema. Read. Luke 1, starting verse 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Yasharab of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So what's powerful about Zechariah giving this, this prophecy? Because Zechariah, those of you, you Sunday school uh, all-stars, you guys know that Zechariah didn't believe the angel. When the angel came and told Zechariah that Elizabeth is going to have a, a child in her old age too, Zechariah didn't believe the angel. And the angel perceived his doubt. And the angel said, because of your disbelief, you're going to be dumb until the child is born. So now the child is born, the child is John the Baptist. So Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age just had John the Baptist. And now the angel, or the Most High using the angel, now John opens his mouth and he's given prophecy. That's why this is powerful. That's why the people are amazed. Like, you just seen this man mute for X amount of months, and now he's opening his mouth giving prophecy. This is powerful here. Read on. Verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Y'all reading that? Mm -hmm. So now they're using these pagan pronouns in the text. That we should be saved from our enemies. But it says, you raised up a horn of salvation in the house of his servant, David. David. Who is David? Where did David come from? David is an Israelite. So you just can't say that we should be saved from our enemies and that this we is the whole world. We being saved from our enemies are the Israelites. The Israelites. And this is the New Testament. The New Testament doesn't contradict the old. It's, it's marrying the old. We should be saved from our enemies. Read on. Uh, uh, verse 71 again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Does the text say spiritual fathers? Anybody got a text say spiritual fathers? It said that you, you gonna, you're going to perform the mercy that you promised to our fathers. And then it says to remember his holy covenant. You promised our fathers that you're going to make sure we don't forget his holy covenant. The, uh, this is about the Hebrew Israelites. He's going to, Yah is going to perform the promise to the fathers that we don't forget the covenant again. The covenant was given to who? That's right. You see how you just walk people through. You don't have to argue with people. Just walk them through the text. And, and, and trust me, you're going to have some good, good conversations. You're going to have some bad conversations. Because the Christians, remember, they don't know they stink. The Christians don't know they're sick. They think you're sick. But when you have these witnesses and all they got is, you've been talking 45 minutes, you ain't read a verse to me yet. I'm going line by line, and I'm not even breaking it down. I'm reading the text. And they just want to keep talking. Well, I don't see God. Just God, God just love everybody. And I just, he sent Christ. It sounds good, but what you yakking ain't in this book. So that's why with class, learn, do, make sure you're diligent first. Make sure you're well studied, and you can sit down with these passages, and, and you plant the seed. It's not your job to convince them. Just plant the seed. And let Abba do the rest. But as you guys being the first fruits of this thing, you just can't sit back. Well, I, I got it, and I'm glad I see it. This, 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 the Most High's mercy upon you comes with obligation. You can't be selfish. Like I understand this thing, so that's all I'm worried about. Then you go over your family house and you see all kind of wickedness. Somebody you got to let them know. And whether they hear or forbear, whether they tell you don't come back no more. Oh, I loved you. I loved you enough to tell you, listen, what you're doing, you know, but you did your job. 
So you don't come into this thing and get, I'm glad I see it. You got work to do. You don't have to be barking at people. You don't have to be just have it on side, put it on your heart. And again, you can say a, send a prayer up. while they're talking to you. Bible, give me something to say, please. And he'll give you what to say to them. And you just move on. Just move on. Where we at, Bob? Uh, uh, verse 73, um, to, to what you're point, is a commandment for us. Come to on share now. With our brethren. It's a commandment. Come Isaiah on 49 now. and 6. Come on now. I'll tell you, you know, that we are supposed to restore our brethren. So just like Kamashia told Peter, once you are converted, basically repented, then go strengthen your brother. So it's a commandment for us, just like Isaiah 49 6 says, to go and strengthen our brethren. All praises. Um, verse 73, verse 72 again. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Oh, and one more right. So in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Verse 74 says, or 73 says, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father. Pastor, I love you to death, but it doesn't say our spiritual father. It doesn't say spiritual father. It says our father. This text is written to physical Israelites that we may be served, uh, safe from our enemies, and the reason why we want to be safe from our enemies that we may serve him without fear. So, serve him without fear has no context where you don't know the history of the Israelites. This generation just came through two, three hundred years of Greek captivity, where if they kept caught you circumcising your son, you and your son get thrown over the mountain. What is the, the or? The, the, the Maccabees said they would take your son and hang your son around your neck while you have to walk around with your dead fetus on your neck. We, we couldn't serve him without fear as we were going through captivity. Right now they're talking about making laws against speaking out against orthodox Christianity. So he's going to save us from our enemies that we can serve him without fear. Right now, if we're being real with each other, some of us who have to go to work, we still have sort of like intrepidation about wearing our garments because it, are they going to profile me? Are they going to kick me out the building? So we still, even, even though today the most bold is one, you're not really serving him without fear. We're serving him the best we can, but we still have fear. So the whole purpose of this text is to restore, to save the people who can't serve him without fear. The only people recorded in this text are the Hebrew Israelites. All the nations who conquered us took our covenant from us. Babylon did it. Persia tried, tried to restore it. Persia did do a little good. You know, most high use, you know, uh, Cyrus. So Cyrus, Cyrus, the Persians, I guess they get a little pass. We get them a little pass. So the Persians say, you know, y'all can have y'all can have your customs back. When the Greeks came, the Greeks said, no, we all want to be universal. We all want to have the same gods. And if I catch you doing anything that's written in the book of Moses, you're getting killed. And that's why the righteous of our family gave up their houses, cars, and went into the mountains. You can have it all. I'm not eating a swan. I'm not sacrificing a Jupiter. I give up my house. I give up my vineyards. I'm going to the mountains to live. That's where you have to be right now. You can't be attached to these trinkets because you got... You know, five, four bedroom mansion, got your central air, and I, I got, if you, if you are in, if your heart is, your heart is in these treasures, when it hit the fan, you're going to be destroyed, because you can't let it go. That's why we rehearsed Saka. I know it's glamping, <laughs> but after a while, it's going to be real, real serious. You can't be attached to these trinkets, because when persecution comes, these trinkets are going to be, be your anchor. It's going to be your death sentence. Nothing new under the sun, man. Nothing new under the sun. The point we're driving home is this class today is all about how to be saved, who salvation is for, and how do you secure your salvation. This text is a story about Hebrew Israelites being exalted by their father, being puffed up and forgetting their father, 
their father taking them through captivity and their father bringing them back to greatness again. This book called the Bible is about the salvation of the Hebrew Israelites. Any comments or questions about that? If you got your hand out there, I put that note there that Luke 1, 67 through 75, that we should be safe from our enemies. It's the parallel of what we read in Isaiah 5. My vineyard, my beloved vineyard, he's salvaging his vineyard. He's saving or salvaging his vineyard. So these, these two halves of the book, the Christians call the Old and New Testament, they marry each other. They don't contradict. Isaiah 5, he comes out and tells you the most highest vineyard are the Israelites. And Luke 1 and 67 says that we should be saved from our enemies and serve our father without fear. Any comments or questions about that? So, we got to address the elephant in the room. We got to address the elephant in the room. Because the question always comes up, what about the Gentiles? What about the Gentiles? And when it comes to the Gentiles, there's different categories of Gentiles. Not every Gentile is the same, just like never every Israelite is the same. Remember, Judas was an Israelite. Right? The, the Pharisees, some of them were Israelites, but they were wicked. So just like not, not every Israelite is the same, not every Gentile is the same. When it comes to the Gentiles, there's three categories. Well, actually, we can, we can splinter them off in many categories, but just for the sake of this class about how do you be saved, how to be saved, the Gentiles come in three main categories. When it comes to the Gentiles, you have the slain, the servants, and then you have the strangers. There's three categories of Gentiles in this book. The slain Gentiles are the ones who are killed. And then you have some Gentiles who become servants. And then there's some Gentiles who are strangers. I didn't want to pull it for the sake of time, but I wanted this to be a quick uh, just like a refresher, but the apocalypse of Baruch, second Baruch, I think it was chapter 81 or one of those high chapters, Baruch was the scribe for Jeremiah. And those of you familiar with the apocalypse of, of Baruch, Baruch was prophesying for the Most High, and the Most High said through Baruch, and those who knew not my people, meaning the nations who didn't touch us, the few nations, there's going to be a few. It ain't going to be a whole lot of them. But the Most High says, the nations who knew not my people, they get to enjoy, to enjoy the land. So when it comes to the strangers, you have the slain, the servants, and the strangers. Let's give you some witnesses to get you all out of here. Let's go to Isaiah 14 and 3, a staple. Isaiah 14 and 3. Everyone wants to know about the Gentiles. I don't teach that. Um, I don't teach that the white man is the devil. If anybody out there, I don't teach that. I don't teach the white man is the devil. I don't teach that every white person is an Edomite. And I don't teach that all Gentiles are going to hell. I don't teach that. Because, it, because the text, now if the text supported it, I would teach it. But the text don't support that all white people are Edomites. And the text don't support all Gentiles are going to hell. The text don't support that. Isaiah 14 and 3. Shema. Shema. Read. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yahweh shall give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou, wherein thou was made to serve. So just for those who are not following along or not familiar with the Old Testament, we're talking about how to be saved and who's restoration for. And for the sake of time, I knew this would draw, draw your eye. We started Isaiah 14 and 3. So I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest from your sorrow and from your fear. But verse 1, who is this context for? Isaiah 14 and 1. Isaiah 14 and 1 gives you the context of who's going to get the, get the rest. This is for the house of Israel, the Jacobs, the, the Israelites. Verse 3 says, I'm going to give you rest from your sorrow. I'm going to give you rest from your fear. This is about the salvation of the Israelites. Any comments or questions about that verse? Read on up. 
six, uh, yes, over to 60 and, and 1 through 12. 61 through 12. Okay. Isaiah chapter 60, starting verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon you. Uh -huh. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Yahweh shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. So while the world is dark, and the world is going through tribulation, the world is going through famine, the glory is going to be over over these people, and the glory of God is going to help help these people shine. Whoever they are, right? We don't know who they are, but the world is in darkness. The, that darkness means trouble. The world is in trouble, but the glory of God is coming over these people. Come, okay? we don't. Verse three, and the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Mm -hmm. Lift up your eyes. Well, wait a minute, God. something's wrong, elder. Something's wrong, elder. It said Gentiles shall come to the light. So come to your light. Well, if all, we're all the same, shouldn't the light be yeah, over everybody? everybody? Exactly. He said the glory and light is going to be over these people, but the Gentiles got to come to it. Right. If salvation is for everybody, why don't the text agree with you? This is critical thinking. You don't have to be combative, but, you know, just critical thinking. Well, it says that the Gentiles have to come to the light. But the people that this text is talking about, they have the light just on them. If we're all the same, the text don't agree with you, Pastor. The Gentiles, meaning nations, the nations have to come to the light, but these people have the light of Yah on them. Read on. And to the brightness of their rising. Come on now. <laughs> these people are rising, and you got to come to their rising. Why didn't you rise with us? This text is not for the world. This text is for the Hebrew Israelites. We don't have. Verse 4. Lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Mm -hmm. Then you shall see and flow together and your heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto you. The forces of the Gentiles, meaning the wealth, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. As I was watching all, all our so-called Jamaicans have to, you know, dress in these uniforms and just cater to everybody. All I, 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 I wanted to tell them so bad, y'all going to be served one day. Y'all going to be served one God, day. God, Same thing in Haiti. God. All they got is, all they have is the tourism. They're, they're being served. They, they, our, our, our young brothers had to entertain all day in the hot sun. And it's like, we're having a good time, but in my mom, I'm like, they, they're, they, this is their livelihood. They have to entertain and make sure you're having a good time. That's how they survive. But they're out there sweating, dancing, doing backflips. And you know, yes, it, it was, I was proud because my people got talent. Like, they doing, they're doing back springs off the dirt, off the sand. You see the Olympics, they had the little the, the little springboard. springboard. Our brother's brother was dancing. He was breaking out the knee. I was like, I'm like, why? <laughs> on sand with no with, with these little shoes on, he just back spring. It's like we I'm proud because our most even and, and like my wife was saying, they wasn't doing it like this is my job. They, they made sure they was into it, but all I was saying, like, y'all gonna it's gonna be reversed. It's gonna be reversed. And that's what this text is talking about. The people going through all this pain and tribulation, the most high is, the most high is reversing it. It's been reversed. Where we at? Uh, verse 7. Did I do verse 7? Oh, verse 6, excuse me. The multitude of camels shall cover you, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of Yahweh. We don't have no stockpile. You don't have to stack. Make sure you get the bullion. Make sure you got some gold currency. We don't need anything. All you need to do is make sure your temple is pure. You keep the most high is gonna make them. That's why when the gas prices are going up, don't worry about it. Baby, if you can't fill up your tank, just make sure you got enough to get back and forth to work. That's all right. I wanted to bring a currency here just, just so y'all have a visual. My wife did the research, so they was like, just take tip money when y'all go. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm always going to take care of my people. So at first I broke down some, some big bills 
and the fives and tens and stuff like that. And then, you know, I gave a couple people fives and a couple people tens, and then I, I just had to Google the, the exchange rate. And I took some of their, brought some of their currency back. Their $100 bill that they got, their $100, I mean $1 bill is $157 Jamaican dollars. So I have a one dollar bill is one and a half times their money. So when I gave him that dollar, he gave me the hundred dollars back, hundred dollar bill back. He really gave me like sixty cents back in our money. That's right. So that's why you have to be grateful that this is your captivity. And I, 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 was, I, I guess I, I, I was, I was trying to stay out of study mode. I was trying to, I was doing my best. You know, my, once I get on the bone, I say my. So I was trying not to research stuff, but I'm like. How did y'all lose this island? Because when y'all revolted and y'all was y'all overthrew the British, it's just it's just Jamaica and name. Mm -hmm. We go on through tours and the brothers saying Chinese on this, Chinese on that, Chinese on this. We go into a we go into a souvenir shop, and the souvenir shop is being run by this 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 foreigner. And so I'm talking to him. So I'm like, oh, well, how long you been here? So I've been here 14 years. I said, so where are you originally from? I'm from India. And I'm like, you know, I'm from the hood. I said, what you doing in Jamaica? You from India? What you doing in Jamaica? And then his partner standing at the counter, you can tell he wasn't, you know. So I'm like, oh, so where are you from? And he says, at first I didn't recognize, I didn't because of their accent, I didn't recognize him. Then he, the other brother uh, explained it, he's from Baghdad. I said, you from Iraq? I said, I understand why you're here. I said, Iraq is terrible. Then his face looked like, I said, well, you know, the U.S. is terrible. I was like, you're from Iraq. Why are you in Jamaica? So the Jamaicans don't own nothing over there. All this pride they got in that red, black, and green flag, they think that's their flag. That's not your flag. These people have taken the island back from you. It's just y'all, they're using y'all to sell tourism. The resorts we're staying at, the Jamaicans ain't getting none of that money. So I'm looking at my people like, how did y'all lose this island? Like when he said, you know, we was making fun of them when we got into the uh, trolley, and my man was like, hey man, you driving on the wrong side of the road. We all started laughing. And he was like, yeah, we're under, we're under the British rule. That's why we drive on the right side of the road. I'm like, and my mind's like, under the British rule, y'all overthrew them. That's why they don't like y'all. That's why y'all stood them. So it's like, this game is, it, these Gentiles keep moving the goalposts. If your schools, your curriculums is developed by them, you're not free. If your government is a democracy where you vote for presidents and senators, you're not free. They just change the game on you. And then what, what did you say, babe? What was that thing you said? It was like, I just had it in my mind. Something, um, It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. But the point I, I wanted the, the Jamaicans to know, this ain't your island. First of all, this ain't really your home. This this is a, your place of your captivity. But they don't own, they, they got that pride and that flag. That flag ain't yours. And when you go to the island, they don't own nothing over there. They own nothing over there. I said, like, how did that happen? How did that happen? Or we'll be at Ali. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of the Nebaioth shall minister unto you. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. So I don't know if y'all caught that. It says the rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up, they shall come up with acceptance on my altar. Y'all know how we've been joking how the deer are just gonna come up to us? That's what that text just said. The rams that we have to sacrifice to the Abba is just going to come up to my altar. We ain't going to have the have no arrow, bow and arrow. Like I can hear, barely see what he's doing. <laughs> 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 I'm too proud. <laughs> You'll be grateful to be sacrificed. The Most High owns these creatures. He's going to have them do. I said it years ago. We are trust fund babies. We are trust fund babies. All you got to do is keep the law. The Most High don't want you to do anything but keep this covenant. Yes, 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 yes. And how many grew up with the maybes? 
Like, yay, we on. <laughs> we, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. What do we'll see mean? Yeah. We'll yeah. see means you ain't go. Yeah. When your parents say, we'll see. Yeah. Let me just go on that. <laughs> we'll see. Like, oh, man. Now, if you get a maybe, maybe it's kind of strong. So that means you're going to stay low. You're going to stay quiet. Right, right, right. But if they say, we'll see, like, oh, we ain't go. We ain't go. <laughs> When we back lawfulness come, that every answer is yes, 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 yes. The rams come up to the altar to be sacrificed. This is the most high restoring his people. Where are we at? Um, Verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring your sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, Unto the name of Yahweh the Alahayim, mm -hmm. and to the Holy One of Yasharal, because he hath glorified you. Uh -huh. And the sons of strangers shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote you, but in my favor have I had mercy on you. So we have to apply a critical thinking to Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 60 and 10. We have to apply a critical thinking to Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of the strangers shall build up your walls. Remember, I said it's three categories of Gentiles. There's one category of Gentiles being slain. There's another category being servants. There's another category that's are truly strangers, meaning they didn't they didn't they didn't destroy us, they didn't touch us. They are the true strangers to Israel. So here's some Gentiles being blessed to be strangers. You're blessed to build our walls up. This book called the Bible is not about the salvation of mankind. This book called the Bible is about the salvation of the Hebrew Israelites. We, we just so happen now through the power of Yah, we can prove with the prophecies and with academic research, we fit these prophecies. Yes, we are kinky hair, come from pecan yellow to we come in all shades. We are these people. Black olive. We come in all shades. We are these people. In Jamaica, you see every shade. And you didn't know it was Jamaica until you heard them say, Brethren, root but respect mine. We come in many shades. It's the same thing in Israel. We are these people. And y'all had no problems recognizing that God is a special people as long as we ain't talk about it's the kinky hair people. <laughs> Y'all have no problem. God, those are God's people, God's hands on those people. But now it's like, uh, I think those are the people. Well, this thing is for everybody. Right, right, right. You change the narrative once, once the most high start waking us up. No, 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 no. He loves everyone the same. Y'all, y'all physical Israel. Yeah, I agree with you. Y'all physical Israel, but I'm spiritual Israel. I'm grafted into y'all. Where's the spiritual Israel in this text? I'm looking for a spiritual Israel in this text. I haven't found it yet. This is about physical Israelites who have been through hell. We've been through hell over here. We've been through hell. Where we at? Verse 11. Therefore your gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Shall so what? Shall perish. Remember I said when it comes to the Gentiles, you have to make sure that you're putting the Gentiles in a proper category. There's a Gentile that's going to serve us. And then Abba says, okay, your plight is to serve. But if you don't want to be served by people, then you're going to be killed. It's your choice. What, what's that song? You can get with this? You get with that. That's what the Most High is telling them. That's what the Most High is telling them. You can get with this, or you can get with. You can go ahead and build that wall, or you can get in this ditch. That those are two options. So when it comes to the Gentiles, we got to put them in the right category. Where we are. Verse twelve: For the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Utterly wasted. Do we need to break that down? Utterly. You don't want to serve my people. Then you're going to be utterly wasted. That's right. I, I guess that's worse than being wasted. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're utterly. <laughs> you're not just wasted. You're utterly wasted. Okay. 
No coming back for that. So we're breaking down, when it comes to the Gentiles, we're not teaching that only Israelites can be saved, but we can't be foolish and we can't add to the text. The Gentiles have three main categories, the slain, the servants, and the true strangers. The true strangers mean you didn't touch my people. Those are the true, true strangers. They're strange to us, not meaning that they don't know who we are. You just didn't, you didn't get familiar with my people. You didn't touch them. You didn't try to violate them. These are real strangers. Okay? Read what we have. Uh, Zechariah 8, 22-23. Zechariah 8, 22. Another witness about the categories of Gentiles. My, where you have it? Right. Zechariah 8, I'm starting at verse 22. Yes, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Many nations are coming to Jerusalem, right? Many people, right? Yeah. Read on. Verse 23. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that the Most High is with you. Did y'all read that? Ten men out of the languages of the nations, that's just a phrase meaning they're, they're Gentiles. They don't speak Hebrew. So ten men from the languages of the nations, they're going to grab the, whole, the, the, tunic, the tunic of a Jew, saying, We're going to go with you. So if this Bible is about the redemptive plan of mankind, why I got to look for a Jew? More importantly, you better know who the Jews are. Because if you, if you grab one of those bangs, <laughs> it's going to come off. <laughs> you, you, you got the wrong thing. You better grab my skirt of a real Jew. Like, can, can I go with you to Zion? I heard the Most High is with his people again. That's why. Everything intertwines the, the identity of the real Jew. Even if you are a stranger, like we got some beautiful strangers making, there's some beautiful strangers making public videos that's upsetting their own families, saying these people are the Jews, these people are the people of God. Those are going to be the ones cleaving to us. When they have to stumble across a video and see that we ain't talking about white man is the devil and you going to hell, you going to hell, you might be going to hell, King Judah. Those are going to be the real strangers that, hey, can I come eat with y'all? Can I come fuss with y'all? Yes. And those are going to be the ones helping us. When we can't drive out there because of the persecution, we have righteous strangers. I go. They serve me all the time. This is y'all's plan, not ours. Amen. Where we at? Uh, Deuteronomy 30. Okay, so now we bring this to a close. But when it comes to the Gentiles, just to wrap this up, all Gentiles are not the same. According to the text, some nations, some Gentiles are going to be slain. Specifically, if you don't want to serve the Israelites. The Negroes served you for 400 years. The Jamaicans are serving you right now. The Haitians are serving you right now. So if you don't want to serve my people, you're getting slain. The true strangers are the ones who didn't touch us. You didn't hurt my people, so you can't... And, and, you're not with my people, but you stay over there, and I'm, I'm going to give you rain, but you have to come up to Jerusalem for the feast. So we, when we talk about the strangers, we got to put them in proper context. Any comments or questions about the strangers? Yes. Sis? Get on the mic, say what you lie. <laughs> Some people are under the misconception, I don't know if you can clarify this, the strangers that are going to grab onto a Jew, Jew, right? Yashara. Does that make them Yashara? Hmm. The text didn't say that. The text never say the strangers become sons. The text said that y'all will cleave to my people. So, and that's how it was supposed to be. If you go back to 1 Kings or 1 Kings 8, when Solomon finished the temple, he prayed for the strangers. So we never had a problem with the strangers because we knew we was lawful. I ain't got to worry about you Take it, take it up from me. Oh, this thing is so beautiful. The Most High says, when y'all coming up to Jerusalem to celebrate my feast, I'm going to sit angels over y'all properties. So, if you, like, nine, everybody's coming. That's why they, only the men go up. I'm going to leave my wife and children home. No, we're going to Jerusalem. Because if I don't live in Jerusalem, I don't get to see the glory of Solomon's te temple all the time. 
So the feast stage, yeah, it says the men present themselves, but my, my family is with me. It's just the men come, come up to the priest, and this is what we brought from home for the Most High. But the family, whole family comes up. So the Most High says, I'm going to send angels to rest over your homes so no one comes into your land while you're going to Jerusalem. That's why this law is powerful. But great question, no. Cleaving to us don't make you us. You are a stranger attached to us. There's no spiritual conversion. Even, even the strangers who get circumcised, you're just a circumcised stranger. You're, you're not Israel. Elder? No. And it's true, a lot of people. It's just it's a hard truth. It's, 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 it's a lot of people truth. think that. They really honestly do think that, you know, they you know, that they, they automatically come in. No, it's your bloodline. If you can give me two or three witnesses, I will recant. I'm not I'm not a pride. Y'all know I'm not prideful. If I'm wrong, if they find text where we're now Israel, I will recant. But I haven't found no witnesses where y'all are spiritual Israel. Y'all are strangers attached to us. Y'all can't become kings. Can a stranger become a king in, in, in Israel? Only only Judah's line can be king. So you can't be king. You can't be priest. And then it says you can't even eat before the children. The children are to be fed first. So it's like I'm not not to be mean and, and put it. But if you if you if you get out of place, we gotta hey, what are you doing? You gotta be a humble stranger. You gotta be a humble stranger. That's why I said. You can come around here pump faking if you want. It, it'll come out eventually. Yeah. It'll come out eventually. If your heart ain't right, you ain't gonna be able to stay under this real teaching. That's right. Produce me witnesses where because you done put on fringes and you don't learn some Hebrew that you you are not an Israelite. Give me the text, I already can. No, you a humble stranger attached to us. So great question. Where we at out? Deuteronomy 30. So we want to end this with because. How to be saved, and y'all grew up in church like I did, and y'all know every Sunday y'all going to be being saved because y'all didn't backslid throughout the week. And, <laughs> and Christian dogma, all you got to do is have faith in Christ and you're saved. And Christ paid it all. Christ paid it all. If we had a dollar for every time we heard Christ paid it all, we all be rich. But if Christ paid it all, well, you know, you need to marry that girl. Y'all can't be living, living together. Why we can't be living together if Christ paid it all? You know, shacking up is wrong. Why is shacking up wrong if Christ paid it all? So, to those out there who may hear this, salvation is a two-pronged two -pronged work. Salvation is based on faith and works. And we're just skimming the surface today. If most I see fit, we continue this. But for those out there still in them churches, going to be in them churches tomorrow, and Jesus, 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 the only one I can Jesus, the only one I can Jesus, the one you think you're, you're pleasing, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. So to end this class, salvation is faith-based and obedience. Salvation is faith-based and obedience. Deuteronomy 30, where we are? Uh, verse 7 through 10. Deuteronomy 30, starting at verse 7. And Yahweh, your Elohim, will put all these curses upon your enemies and on them that hate you, which persecuted you. And you shall return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments, which I command you this day. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh, your Elohim, will make you plenteous in every work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your land for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over you for good. As he rejoiced over your father. So we we truncated this chapter for the sake of time. You can go back from the top. But what's happening in this chapter, the curses are being reversed. But I started at the verse, it says the curses are being reversed. Verse 8, thou shalt return and obey. Thou shalt return and obey. Obey is an action. What they say, uh, obey your thirst. Obey is an action. So he says, when you return, obey the voice, then you're going to be plenteous. I'm going to rejoice over you again. So salvation ain't no free gift of Jesus Christ. Salvation comes with obedience. Any comments or questions of that? Continue on up. Verse 10. If you shall hearken unto the voice of Yahweh your Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, 
and if you turn unto Yahweh your Allah with all your heart and with all your soul. Again, we're we're reading an English text, but all praises that you know we pay attention in English class. If is a clause. If you obey, if you return. So this thing about salvation is free. No, salvation comes with obedience. Any comments or questions about that? If then, that's right. And to put a uh, a pen in it, as they say, let's put a pen in it. Let's go to the end of the book. Revelation 14 and 2. Revelation 14 and 2. Let's read 12. I'm sorry. 12. 14 and 12. Why? Shema. Shema. Uh, read it. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High. And the faith of Yahweh Shai. And what? And the faith of Yahweh Shai. And what, everybody? And the faith of Yahweh Shai. No. Yah is good. All the time. And all the time, Yah is good. I've read this verse so many times before, but it's going over my notes. I'm like, wow, this is powerful. So, here is the patience of the saints. So, coming up in church, everybody who said that repentance prayer is saint, brother so and so, sister so and so. But according to the text, to be a saint, you have to have patience and you have to keep the commandments. The English word saint, for those out there on social media, the pagan word saint just means to be sanctified. In the Hebrew, we say set apart, kadash. You're kadash by the Most High's commandments. You can't be set apart according to your pastor. Well, I don't see nothing wrong by having the kids have fun chasing eggs. The Father didn't command that. But I don't see nothing wrong with having a good time celebrating Jesus' birthday and bringing trees in. The commandments don't support that. So to be a saint, you have to be keeping commandments. And then, here's the Hebrewism of this text. Here's the Hebrewism of this text, Revelation 14 and 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yah. I thought it were Moses' commandments. I thought it was the most mosaic covenant. Right. Yeah. You see how seminary right. seminary doctrine got you going to hell? Right. That, that mosaic covenant served this purpose, and, and we got a greater Moses in Jesus. It says the commandments of God, right. the Most High. Right. Moses didn't give us one commandment; he just was a news reporter. Mm -hmm. Moses was the dude on the corner back in the day. He was a herald, crying out. But he was giving you the word from on high. So it wasn't no more Mosaic covenant. Here are the patience of the saints that keep the commandments of Yah, right? And then it says, and the faith of Yahweh Shah. For my Hebrews out there, what is the word faith? It's the works of Yahweh. But what's the actual word faith in Hebrew? Amanah. Um, Amanah. You keep the commandments of Yah. And the Amana of Yahawashah. Amana, I don't have the glyphs where I will keep this light. Amana is the ox head, the water, and the sea, and the man with his hands up. Amana, the strength of the power of the spirit. So faith is a dead word. You keep the Amana of Yahawashah. The Amana of Yahawashah is the Torah. Because the Torah is our power that brings us to life. I never caught that. I'm like, oh, Father, you're so good. You keep the commandments of Yah and the Amanah of Yahushan. It's a double entendre. The, the, the faith of, of Jesus is the law of God. <laughs> all praise to the great I am. This class is all about how to be saved because, yes, I love learning the language. But we have a job to do. And this job we got is not going to always, it's, it's going to be tensions in the room. You're going to feel people don't want you around. Do your part with the most high point in your heart and, and let the most high do the rest. How to be safe. Salvation is a serious topic. And, and, and it, it, it is, it's a hard job. If you're not mature in the spirit, don't go out there flipping over people's tables. You know, should be no port. 
they probably spent the last twenty dollars on that. You flip over grandma table. Grandma, that's all grandma got, you don't flip over a pork child. Don't don't be ignorant like that, family. Just don't be ignorant. Always ask the most high to lead and guide you and give you the words to say. Season your word with salt, that you may win your family members. But salvation is, is, is our job. We want to save as many as possible. According to this text, you are saved by obeying the law and having faith in your house, shot. Any comments or questions about that? Me personally, I just believe, uh, and this is just me, um, this, this is one of the, the biggest hurdles in the community, you know, after being awakened, one of the biggest hurdles is that right there, that, 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 uh, that, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? That, uh, the hostility you'll get from family members, friends, this and that, whatever. Um, and because again, in Christianity, you were taught because you serve in God, Everything is supposed to be all right. Everything going to be all right. Come on now. You're not, you're not supposed to be sick. You're not supposed to go through anything, this, that, whatever. Yet in Matthew 10, uh, verse 34, Yahweh Shai, Messiah, says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. Mm, come on now. He says, I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So, you know, we get it. And it's not that, you know, you know, we, you know, we are, like you said, embittered towards them. Right. We're not causing the separation. Right. It's you keeping the commandments versus them not wanting to keep the commandments. Come on now. You know what I mean? So that's why they're, they're that's why the, the, the chasm is there. You know, he said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. That sword is the word. God. That's why we hear, like, uh, I, I, I experienced this with my loved ones, but I, why do you have to attack someone else's belief to pr promote yours, and you don't know this, this word? This word is bringing that sword, but unlike the unlearned brothers, or I say, unlike the immature brothers, it don't cause for us to swing the sword, no. Because when you're swinging the sword, that's your flesh. All I gotta do is speak the word, and the, the, you let the word be the sword. You don't go out here like you're uh, Conan, you know what I mean? No, I'm not swinging a sword. I'm speaking a sword. Besides, going to do the cut. You take your flesh out of this thing. Brothers get puffed up. I, I got a precept package. I, I got something to cut you. You ignorant. You ignorant to sit down somewhere. They studying to argue. You ain't studying to save. You're studying to argue. I'm not I'm not up this thing to win debates. I don't, I don't want to win no arguments. I don't want to win souls. So you don't swing this Bible, you speak this word, and the, the Messiah is the sword here through the slicer. That's if right. their heart's ready. If their heart is if their heart is not ready, it don't I don't care how many proofs you bring out. It's not gonna help. Not gonna help. Great comment. Any um any other comments, questions, concerns about how to be saved? Those online, Sister Amaniya, uh, Lena, Jasher, Chef, the water of Bob for your patience, your attentiveness. Uh, Y'all willing, I don't know, we may continue this, uh, I don't know, the Most High does what he do, but if all hearts and minds are clear, we want to stand face to 